This is where they find the best prop. I need this prop in my life. <laughs> it's like a wallet size. <laughs> I need this prop in thing my life. That says map lo location, location map. map. <laughs> this might lead to something. And it's like a treasure map with like an X that marks <laughs> and the, then the spot. the golden triangle because that's the drug organization. <laughs> yeah. But it's just location map. And the guy's like, this will probably show us where to go. <laughs> This might lead to something. What? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 31st episode of Good Bad or Bad Bad, the show where we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I am your host, Mr. Brian Shelligo, joined by my host, Mr. Kyle Hanley. And it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood because, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we watched The Stabilizer. What does he do, Brian? He stabilizes. <laughs> Stabilized. Mainly by driving vehicles through walls. Stabilizes by unstabilizing other things. Yes. Kind of like in Just Cause, the video games, where he fixes the third world countries he goes to by destroying everything. <laughs> you just got stabilized. So this one, uh, you found this one. Because uh, we were trying to come up with something. And uh, this, uh, I had never heard of it. Never, it doesn't have a single person in it that I've ever seen in anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an Indonesian film from 1986. How could you tell? How could you tell? Uh, well, because I Googled and it said oh, Indonesia okay. on the filming. <laughs> Indonesia Airlines, too. Oh, yeah. I'm, surpri I'm surprised the uh, the flight made it in. Never mind. That's Malaysia. 1986, but it kind of looks more like the 70s, I think. Like, it seems... It doesn't look very late 80s, but maybe that's just, like... Maybe in Indonesia, that it was and a little behind. And also the fact that we weren't alive, so what, the, what would we know? Well, no, but I mean, when you look at, like stuff for like other movies and stuff from the time period yeah. this looked older than 86 to me i'll give you that the guy they had a lot of 70s apparel yeah uh it, but i mean there was leather jackets galore oh there was also perms it was galore. a mixture you're right it was also plenty of 80s stuff with yeah the, the hair some of the hair and the jackets and all that kind of stuff but there was other stuff where i was like kind of 70s like the, dude and, walking around with like chain popped open chest yeah and like all that hair mesh shirts and <laughs> like mesh undershirts and so okay so the stabilizer uh like i said it's an indonesian film and my my guess on the story i tried to do some research i couldn't find a lot because like the wikipedia page is literally just the plot of the movie like there's no information so but my guess is because when when you first turn it on we, you can watch this on uh trauma's youtube so trauma or whoever most people know trauma films are uh and lloyd kaufman distributed this movie but they're they don't had didn't have any hand in the making or anything like that this wasn't created yeah. as a trauma film this was somebody found like a vhs somewhere yeah and like we need to find these people yeah like they like lloyd kaufman or somebody at trauma found this movie and i'm sure that's just the thing they do i don't know a lot about what they, but they probably go find old weird movies and distribute them <laughs> that you know so they found this movie and uh and re and distributed it but yeah, there's. It's not. It wasn't intentionally made like a trauma film to be silly and. I mean, it made moments were made as comedy. <laughs> but this is a serious film. Like this is an attempt to make like a serious action, like uh, like character not character driven, but like where where we care about the stakes and that sort of thing. And like, even though we some, don't know what the stakes are, yeah, particularly not particularly. There's a drug formula. <laughs> I'm here for two things. The narcotic detector and the formula <laughs> and uh, something um so but like this was a this was an indonesian film that was like who like they're they, they went for it and boy did they go for it because there is explosions and fire and car crashes galore everything man. it's nuts this movie is kind of amazing and it's uh i mean it's it's bad but it's um action packing from the begin very first yes, scene yeah, for the, the movie. very first scene. <laughs> it's amazing. So let's just get into it. The very first scene. We have a we, okay. Just to set this up, we have a professor who is like developing some sort of 
anti drug anti detection. He says that he could, he's a drug detector of some sort, yeah. but also some sort of drug formula. I think the narcotic detector and the formula. Like two things, it seems like to me. Like they want the drug detector, but they also want some sort of special drug formula from him or something like that. Um. And so yeah, he's it's like a he's like a doctor. Yeah, guy. and then he gets a phone call, right? Is it a yeah, a phone call. As he answers the phone, yeah, a motorcycle comes flying through the window. All right, catch. Through the window, dirt bike through the window. Take note, that's the first time that happens in this film. A vehicle goes through a wall. Won't be the last. Not even close. <laughs> I, love how the, I love how the second guy comes in. He like has to kick, o- kick off a little bit of the glass. Like, got to get mine in, too. And then he just opens the door for one of our main protagonists. <laughs> the glass out of the window because he's like it wasn't fair that guy got to drive them they probably like had a rock paper scissors fight outside about who got to drive the motorcycle through and that guy <laughs> lost and he's like fucking stupid i gotta open the door <laughs> so yeah and then we're introduced to victor right is it yes, victor that comes yes. in yeah Who's like a second level henchman. He's like the second in command in the bad guys. And so he's trying to get the formula and they just beat the ever living shit out of this professor. Like they're trying to get the stuff from him and they're like, oh, you won't tell us? Okay. And they beat the shit out of him and then they start breaking everything, okay, right? First though, they they he, they push him into the chair to basically threaten him. Yeah. And then he like uses his foot to press the recorder. And I thought this is a recorder that's somewhere in his office. Yeah. Nope. No, not even no. close. That's what I was like. This has got to be an office, office somewhere. If you in, on the recorder, there's a picture of him, and so the, for half the movie, I was like, "Why in the fuck does this guy have a photo of himself on his own recording device?" <laughs> and it doesn't do shit. And I'm like, "What was your plan? You didn't just lobbing grenades into the ocean?" <laughs> yeah, we find out later it's in his home, uh, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so that, and they start, I love when they start breaking all of this shit. <laughs> so they're like, ah, break everything. And they like drive the motorcycle yeah. up on the table. And a common theme throughout this movie is using the motorcycle for hand to hand combat. As a, as a weapon. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of awesome motorcycle shit in this movie. Uh, this is the first part, but I love in this scene. So it's like a lab and they're breaking all stuff. I don't know if you noticed this. One of the things that they break is like this old clay pot that they knock off of a table that looks like a, a relic from like ancient Rome or something. And I'm like, what was that doing there? <laughs> like it's very, cause the rest of it's all like lab equipment and there's just this like weird ancient pottery. Who can say Needless to say, they, they they blow it up and make it look like he perished. Yeah, the right. And well, they blow it up right as his daughter gets there. Yeah, uh, like his. So we we're introduced to his daughter in this moment, who shows up, uh, and then the police are there or something, and they're like, "We're looking for your dad." And then right at that moment, the house blows up. I want to meet the professor. <laughs> and this is no shitty CGI. It's 1987. They blew up a house. And it's amazing. There's a lot of stunts in this movie Holy and explosions shit. where people, yeah, these people are hurt, are hurt <laughs> and or dead. Very much hurt. Uh, there's a few of them. There's one in a in a in a jeep later where like did that guy get crushed by that. Jeep? I'm pretty sure those were dumb. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, I couldn't tell, but they're uh, it was nuts. So then that now we're kicked off into the story, and this is where we meet. Uh, cut to an airport, and we meet uh, our our main t- characters, uh, which this guy, the main character. He's an FBI agent and his partner. God. His partner's name's Sylvia. She's just a generic looking I can't, I can't, woman. I can't, I can't, the only thing that was going through my head the entire time was was just that perm. Yes. That perm. He, I don't even remember the guy's name. What was his it? name's Peter something. Peter. 
Right. But he looks like Brian May, the guitarist from <laughs> Queen. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like yes. a lot. <laughs> uh, he has this giant crazy perm. And so we are introduced to him and they meet up with their the the Indonesian counterparts from the police or whatever that are working on this drug bust, right? Yeah. yeah. Not not too Not too yeah. Okay. Now the, the 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 main bad guy of the film, Rainmaker. His name is uh, <laughs> Rainmaker. Greg Rainmaker. The name is Rainmaker. Greg Rainmaker. Yeah, yeah. Cuz later in the movie he's like the name's Rainmaker. Greg Rainmaker, <laughs> and I'm like, is basically Rainmaker's like Rainmaker's a nickname. <laughs> okay, tail tail these guys and take care of them. Yeah. But, so they hand this dude a photo. Not to sound slightly racist, but you're in Indonesia, and he's a white guy with a perm. He's not gonna be that hard to miss. <laughs> he's gonna stand out. And the funny thing, when they look at the picture, it doesn't even look that much no. like him in the picture. I'm like, was that him? Okay, they're like, yeah, it's him. I'm like, I guess it was him because his hair looks different and stuff. But uh, so yeah, these two guys see him in the airport and follow and uh, start. They all get in the car and they start trailing our. Uh... And at, literally everybody in the car is aware of them being tailed. Yeah. Anyone else aware that we're being tailed? Yeah, I am. That's why we're headed up this way. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shitty henchmen. Yeah, they're just like they're just like oh they're trailing us and they're like yeah we know everybody's like yeah, also, yeah. Ryan why do you t why do you tail somebody to f find out where they're going yes and or what, yeah how, what, what what do you not do when you're tailing somebody shoot at them Sh open fire immediately well the thing is like so I guess the point was for them to kill him but then why did you need to tail him just to why kill would you, him why would you do it out in public like yeah, that yeah it's so stupid but I love there's a shot when they start shooting because they just kind of randomly start shooting there's a shot that cuts back to uh, Peter and he's it's his fate he is completely nonplussed by gunfire <laughs> he's just sitting there like whoa whoa he's the stabilizer okay <laughs> yeah it's true he is the stabilizer he's unfazed unfazed uh, he's completely stable in that moment. Um, and then we get right out of the gate again here. It's just cars flipping over and crashing through stuff. And I, it's crazy. <laughs> the dubbing in this movie for certain characters oh, yeah. is amazing. Uh, Our the main character, the dubbing, is nuts. It's possible something could have happened to her. I stayed on his tail and destroyed three shipments. Big ones. The people, the dude taking a leak and getting his truck yeah. stolen. Truck, come back. Yeah. And then the guy on the bike is like, damn you, you <laughs> bastards. Yeah. You bastard. It's kind of great. It's fucking amazing. And like I said, cars through fruit stalls off ramps into for lakes and lakes. whenever the whenever they drove through the fruit stalls, I was like, th those people were a second away from death. Yeah. Who were at the fruit stalls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they won't it, the, the stunts in this are hot and heavy, and they look very, shall we say, not extra practiced. And how much how much insurance did you think this, this company had? <laughs> not a lot. Zero? Yeah. Exactly zero? <laughs> yeah. And they should have had all of the insurance because somebody died on set. I almost guarantee it. Okay, so after the chase, after this opening chase where the, the guys, they get away... And the guys like crash into the, they shoot a couple of them and they crash into the lake and whatever. And then we cut to a, like a boardroom where they're giving a presentation about the drug. That's not a boardroom. That's a, that's somebody's yeah. private theater. It's like a theater. Yeah. Um, and I love, I love, and I mean, lots of movies do this, but the way that our FBI agents are dressed in this scene, it's not like they're in the field undercover in this moment. They're in a, like a, a room talking to other high ranking cops and stuff. And our, our Peter is wearing a button-down shirt that is open to here with his bare shaved <laughs> chest. Sylvia is wearing, like, this weird colored, like, it, it looks like a Art Deco threw up on her. Like, it's, and like, what? You guys are in a professional, in a police station, supposedly, like, in a professional setting. Yeah. Put on some real clothes. <laughs> and one of my favorite parts about this whole thing is when he's discussing Greg Rainmaker, he's like, all right, let's take the first slide. Here's our guy. This is the fugitive, Greg Rainmaker. He began his career as a mafia messenger. Take the next slide. Here's our guy in front of the, uh, was it Awok or something? The uh, it, it's, it's a Thailand like these Thailand like uh, ancient monument. Oh yeah. It's like this guy's in Thailand. You can tell because this thing's behind him. Slide. 
Next, he turned up in Thailand. Here's a picture yeah. of the guy. Here's a picture of the guy with something <laughs> behind him. Yeah. What? What? How does this correlate <laughs> at all? And and the dubbing in this scene with with our main character is fantastic. He has a great line where he shouts, "And that's the proof Rainmaker is here." The kidnapping of Professor Provost, who invented the narcotics detector, is a sure indicator that Rainmaker is in fact here. <laughs> like it's just fucking amazing, and like I said, we're, it's all in English, and it's a bunch of uh, either American or British, like uh, Australian, uh, whatever yeah, actors, yeah. and a bunch of Indonesian actors, but they're mm -hmm. all speaking English for the most part. But it's all dubbed over because most likely because just the quality, like you know, at the time of recording, yeah. it just wasn't but, like, great. You can look. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. The main guy's voice does not match no, him at all. No, no, no. And, it, and it's delivered terribly. Like, the voiceover lines are delivered so poorly. You are prepared to sell your own country's next generation, its future, because you are greedy? And like just stilted and and uh, it's 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 and amazing. that's why I hate that son of a bitch. yeah <laughs> you know, like it just every line is just like a cold read that is just not in the moment and makes no sense. Oh, I love you, I love you. <gasps> then we meet Rainmaker. That we man cut to him. has some impressive golf shoes. <laughs> I know. So it cuts to him in his like in a big like bathroom area, like a like a, where a hot tub or something is, and he's sitting with his feet up. And the first shot, I'm like, are those spikes on the bottom of his shoes? Yep, <laughs> yes they are, and they play a pivotal role in this film. <laughs> he has like three inch metal, not three inch, but like inch or two inch long metal <laughs> spikes on the bottom of his shoes and he walks around in them all the time and it he okay so he can't walk very well now they they address, they address this that yeah in the film i'm pretty sure it's that he put these on and he's like i cannot walk i'm gonna these. fall it's okay our writers will write in why you yeah. can't we have to walk yeah yeah, yeah yeah i know i felt the same thing because he like really clumsy because or like he like limping and like weird because he can't walk in those spike shoes because i'm i sure they would be really weird to walk on and like slippery and stuff but um and then so we meet his girlfriend uh in the scene nora who's in the bathtub he's and he starts pouring, pouring whiskey champagne. or champagne on her I'm like why are you doing it? and she's like oh And it's like he's just he's like but he's not he's like pouring it on her hip it's not like on her breasts or somewhere it's just like on the side of her hip he's pouring whiskey and she's like uh and i'm like what all right that's weird uh um, we go to the basement where the professor the dungeon yeah captive. this dungeon how much of a set was this brian how much of a set was this dungeon <laughs> A, a very much a set it's masonry yes that is made of cardboard yes and i love when they walk down into it oh they, they have to <laughs> crouch under the when they're coming down the stairs everybody has to like crouch under the like hang <laughs> the hanging ceiling that is there to get in it's kind of great uh, so they have uh, the professor locked up in the basement and we meet some of the other henchmen, and including one of my favorite henchmen, who's the uh, guy with the blonde streaks, like in his hair, oh, yeah, and like, and he's the one with the mesh uh, and shirt and the leather, and jacket. leather jacket. That guy's amazing. They did have cool looking, interesting henchmen that yes. all stood apart from each other. And like, we'll talk about Mr. T later, <laughs> and uh, not actually Mr. T. And so they start. Uh, they like they're like you got to do what we tell you. And he's like no 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 no, and the guy says I'll get rid of your foolish fucking heroism or something like that. And I do this for my country. Yeah, he's like I won't give in because I won't sell out my country or whatever. So they need to make they need to make an exam. First off, he's already been cleated. Yeah. In the leg. Yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. need to make an example. So they take a take one of the guys. The, who's one like of the henchmen who up. failed it. Yeah, and they they yeah. strap him up into this weird device this yeah. electric device yeah with his hands up and then he first before they electrocute him he's kicking him with his spike cleats and like breaking his knees yeah. ah! 
It would be more fun for all of us if you had more than just the two knees to destroy, Professor. With his spike cleats, which is awesome. Um, and then, yeah, then they electrocute him. And it actually looks kind of awesome. <laughs> Look at this, honey. Stimulating, isn't it? For like what it is, like it could look way Brian, worse. Brian, that seems like it's set up that it's gonna appear later in the film. Like I don't know, like the main, like a big moment. Yeah, like like our Peter's gonna be strapped up to it. And... Yeah, yeah, like it's the gun. You know, it's uh, the 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 quintessential. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we see it again? Tchaikovsky's gun. That's not the right name. No, oh, okay. <laughs> no, we do we not see it again. We do not ever see it again. It plays no purpose. Other than this first scene where somebody gets electrocuted. Yeah, because that's totally the kind of thing you're right. That in, like in a Bond film, you would see the, the bad guy use on somebody early in the film, and then Bond would be strapped in it later, and then he would have to get out of it somehow. No. Mm -mm. Never seen again. What was... What was PETA's uh, thoughts of this film, Brian? I bet they weren't big fans. Because, <laughs> uh, just a heads up, you're about to watch a man eat a live lizard. <laughs> if you don't want to watch that, look away now. What <laughs> the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a part of what you'll see inside when we present the attraction of Debus. It takes a unique talent to perform these acts. I don't know. Uh, By the way, not the first time not, this happens not, in the no, movie. No, the first time, but not the last time this happens in this movie. <laughs> I, I, so yeah, so they like they say it as a thing. They're like they're like advertising this bar that has like a show of like interesting performers, and the way and they, and they, there's like a voiceover, and it's a guy eating a fucking iguana, and they're like, oh, it takes such. Such skill, such... And I'm like, to eat I, a I can, iguana? I can, already, I can already see the YouTube comments. Oh, that's a monitor lizard, not an iguana? Yeah, or whatever, sorry. But it's a big lizard. And and then, yeah, the, the announcer's like, it takes such skill, such talent. And I'm like... It takes a unique talent to perform these acts. To chew on a lizard? Oh. I don't know. It, takes, it takes weird being a fucking weirdo. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> uh, but then we cut inside of the bar. Okay, yeah, this is where they have like the performance acts come out. Yeah. And it's it's everywhere from look at them rub this flame on this guy. And it I don't understand what that's all yeah, about. Yeah, and they're like, it didn't burn him? Okay, I guess. Um another dude's like break dancing on glass. <laughs> Well, but the thing that, yeah, <laughs> it really is break dancing. But the thing I love about this, they they show, they announce all, who all these people are. And it's like a, it's like a travel brochure in the middle of this movie. Like they're trying to convince people to come to Indonesia. Cause they like the first guy, the fire guys, they're like this. And they like build it up and they give, and the guy announces this big spiel about how cool it is. And then they tell you where you can see them. The fire and glass you'll see are real. This is actually happening. It is not magic. This traditional art form can be found in Acho, West Sumatra, and Banten, west of Java. This is Debus from Banten. To like, I imagine like they think like, ooh, you know what we'll do? When we make this movie that'll be shown in America and stuff like that, we'll advertise some of our local performers and get convinced more. You know, like the tourism board was like, we'll give you a thousand dollars if you. They weren't investors for the movie, were they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's so funny though. Okay. But it gets to the point where we get a guy who's doing a sword dance. Oh, or, well, yeah, we gotta right, get the flashback right, fast. first. Okay, so th this is just them walking outside to begin with. So why do you hate Rainmaker so yeah. much? And then it cuts to just in the bar. Yeah. And like he almost like slams his hand down. It looks to me as if you're always chasing Greg Rainmaker. Is there any special reason? Is it something you haven't told me? He's the man I hate the most. I despise scum like Rainmaker. Seven years ago. I hate that son of a bitch more than anyone. <laughs> yeah, because seven years ago, 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 ago. And the beginning part is him, like, is Rainmaker doing a drug deal, and then him shooting at him. I guess he hits him in the leg. He hits him in the leg, and that's why he has the and, But limb. then a semi-truck goes by and... And, and disappears? disappears. <laughs> and like, that's why... Uh, initially, I was like, that's why you hate him? Yeah. Because he yeah. got away? Because you shot him, and he ran away? Yeah. 
Um, but no, the real reason is that, so then he finds Rainmaker's woman, because Rainmaker had a fiancé or a girlfriend, and he finds her her, her ho- home and comes in and, and he rapes her. Um, and the thing about this scene, in this horrible scene, it just randomly cuts from the rape to a shot of the poster <laughs> of <Okay>. Peter. <laughs> Okay, so this guy is like an FBI or DEA agent of some degree. He's FBI, he has interna- he's Okay, so he's international. He has international work. Yeah. Super, super secret undercover. Where do you go to get a film-produced photo, like poster, of yourself? Oiled up in a mesh shirt with an Uzi. <laughs> I don't know. Looking exactly like Stallone and Cobra. Cobra. Yeah. I don't know, but I... I that poster is blew my mind, and the first time you see it is in the middle. Like I said, it cuts from yeah. this tr- uh, horrible to ah, poster. I'm like what? What's that? <laughs> Why am I looking at this poster now? What? Where is it? It's so fucking weird. What? Right. And then so afterwards, after, he gets done kicks his, her, but he like river dances on her legs. Yeah. <laughs> He stomps her with his cleats on her knee. Not like in her... Yeah, like her yeah. legs. Not like... Not like... He doesn't kick her in the face or anything. It's her leg. And then leaves. And then Peter shows up. And then I dies and she shock, dies? Apparently. Yeah, I was like, wait. Did she die? Because you don't actually even know. Because he's just like... She's like, I'm gonna go get an ambulance. And she's like, no, stay with me. And I'm like, okay. And then... but <laughs> Like, did she die? And then and then she just kind of like passes out. And, uh, and then we, I'm like, wait. But did she die? Don't worry, honey. You'll be all right. I'll call an ambulance. There's no time. Hold me tight. Tell me you love me. Oh, I love you. I love you. (gasps) Oh, Oh, I love you. How did she die? (laughs) Brian's story of true love. I'm going to go get an ambulance. (laughs) Stay with me. (laughs) (laughs) But I I was was like, oh, because then you realize eventually, yeah, no, she did die. For sure died. Cause, or else he just up and left her. <laughs> like, cause he's like with a, a different girl later. But it, it was very strange. Cause I was like, you wouldn't die from getting spiked in the leg. I don't think. Who did this to you? Rainmaker did it. His shoes, Peter. Watch out for his shoes. I should have killed the bastard that night. There's a sword performer yeah. after the guy saws on his tongue with a knife, which was really uh. upsetting. <laughs> you couldn't watch that. Um, and then there's a guy with a machete who's just like swinging it around randomly and like cutting his arm and not cutting his arm like he's like he's like ha I'm I'm I, I'm impervious to this knife, but then he like kind of swings it. At, but the thing is, it's really annoying. I thought he was like doing a thing because he like swings it and hits the table in front of uh, Peter. Yeah. And Peter jumps up and punches him. And I was like, oh, is this like a gag? Like how Peter like thought he was attacking him, but it was just part of the show. But no. The guy was an assassin there to kill Peter. Why did he... It is. It 100% is. Yeah, no, no, it is. It is. It's just... Because <laughs> in the scene, I, my mom, my well, problem with it... Yeah, there's well, there's like four other people there that are like there to kill him. Yeah. To a degree. Oh, well, is there? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's at least another one. There's the other guy who shoots, shoots that guy. guy. Who are you? <laughs> so that they can't like find out who he's working for but the thing that fucking no insane to me is like he had a clear shot right at peter's head but he hits the table in front of him like they're so weird i'm like you could have just killed him why did you hit the table first and then let him punch you i don't understand what's going on this is where they find the best prop. I need this prop in my life. <laughs> it's like a wallet size. <laughs> I need this prop in thing my life. That says map lo- location, location map. map. <laughs> this might lead to something. And it's like a treasure map with like an X that marks <laughs> and the, then the spot. the golden triangle because that's the drug organization. <laughs> yeah. But it's just location map. And the guy's like, this will probably show us where to go. <laughs> this might lead to something. What? <laughs> location map oh shit oh it's so good so then they go to the place that the map tells them to go and they get to this warehouse but they get there and they're like and they find the drugs and they test them and they're like oh it's baby powder it's a setup 
shit. It's baby powder. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That is met with whack-a-mole style <laughs> pop out of barrels with guns. It's a setup. Don't move. Like six dudes pop up out of the barrels that were sitting around on the ground like, ha-ha! It's so great. It's so good. They're just like, Mah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. We were in the barrels the whole time. So fucking stupid and amazing. Oh, God. Don't move! Throw down your guns. What the hell is this? Who are you? So they're taking the victor, and then... The and there's a pool, there's like a pool party going on, yeah. A fight ensues here. Well, and the way it starts is amazing, because they're up there, and Victor's gonna, like, kill him or whatever. Yeah, and then somebody gets hit with a crossbow. I'm sorry I have to say goodbye so soon. Huh? <laughs> a guy sitting at the pool... <laughs> <laughs> on the on the diving board, all of a sudden, just falls into the pool with a crossbow bolt in his back, and we're like, "What the fuck?" And then our Peter bites the wrist of the guy. <laughs> holding no, he on grabs him. the dude in the nuts. Yeah, and somebody bites somebody's wrist. I just remember that but, vividly. Uh, okay, so they get in a fight. This this dude comes out with a machine gun. This is the first time we've seen a machine gun really in this movie. Yeah, what does it sound like? I don't it remember. sounds like one of those stupid little like electrical toys you oh, got yeah. as a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it like it has like the dumbest machine gun sound effect. Yeah. So yeah, there's a big fight and they're like they're like getting themselves out of their bonds and and kicking everybody's ass and it's lots of fun. And then there's a great moment with a weed eater thing. <laughs> there's a weed eater fight where a guy who's doing some gardening shows up with like this weird crazy metal swinging weed. It's, I don't even know what kung fu gardener. Yeah. And he and he starts and and then he like drops it and then our guy kicks him onto it and he gets ugh, sprays blood everywhere. <laughs> it's great uh and then they run off into the jungle or into the okay this is where they meet uh the, yeah the professor's daughter the professor's daughter who is the person who shot the crossbow yeah i got the guy yeah as they're leaving as they're running they stop and say all right this seems like a good place to stop you mind telling us what the hell you're doing out here <laughs> yeah and then as she gets into the discussion they cut location yeah Meet Miss Christina Provost, the daughter of the professor. Oh, yeah. This is Peter Goldson, an American cop. What a nice coincidence. Yes. It was a coincidence, all right. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what the <laughs> fuck should happen? Well, it's interesting. And I actually, yeah, because I, but I think it was actually kind of a clever, like, not, I think it was, they did that on purpose. It was definitely on purpose. Like, it was like the moment where they're like, it was a, it was like an intentional, like, haha. All right, so now you're gonna tell us what's going on, and then it cuts to a reverse shot of her, and then they're in her house now. And so they, they like, it was like a cool passage of time thing. I think it actually kind of worked in the, in what it was and what they were going I, for. I, I think it should have been more apparent instead yeah. of because the cut they used was a supernatural cut. Yeah, like yeah, it wasn't, right. it wasn't like a hard cut. You're or right. Anything. You're right. It did look like, yeah, you're right. It does because it, 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 they needed a more severe cut. That, that made it more obvious that we were jumping locations because it, it is a little like, what, we're in a house now? Wait, what, what just happened? So this is where they go to the recorder yeah. and show the recorder. I was like, oh, it's at it's at their place. With, okay, this guy isn't the kind of crazy psycho who has a picture of himself. Yeah, yeah. And I love this. So the other guy, I can never remember his name, but the- Johnny? Johnny, is that? Yeah, Johnny, I think it is. Um, I love this. They're like uh, so. Uh, 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 Peter and the <laughs> and the daughter of the professor are like hitting it off, and the guy's like, "You know what? I gotta get the fuck out of here because you guys are about to go bone." I can tell. You know karate? Just a little bit. Now I'm reading that to expand my knowledge. Good. Sorry, I gotta go. Why don't we relax? I'm sure Tina will accommodate you. Why don't we relax? He like bros it up real hard. He's like, you know what? I gotta leave, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> and he like pieces out. I and mean, then she tells her story about Victor. Um, and then we get another flashback oh, because boy. she's like, he's like something like, how do you know Victor? What what's the whole situation? Turns out Victor worked for the professor. Mm -hmm. And he had a took a liking to her and he used to like watch her creep on her while she was swimming. And there's a really weird shot when she gets out of the pool, she's like toweling herself down and they like show a really tight close up of her belly button while she's trying. It's very strange. Um, but then, so like he tries to rape her, but then like the professor catches him and throws him out and says, Get the fuck out of here. Don't ever come back. 
basically, as a story. Okay, so like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Victor's in love with her or something. Okay, so Christina and Peter start making out and go to the bone zone. And then we cut to Johnny, who goes to check in on Sylvia, who's taking a shower. Uh, whenever, I, whenever I saw the scene of her taking a shower, I'm like... Oh, they're trying to be. They're trying to not show nudity in this to not get hit. What? Nope. 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 They fucked up. There's like a little bit of. There's not <laughs> there's like any nip- overt like boobs, but there's like there's you some, see some nipples there, here there's, and there. There's some. Ba- I, I call it back boob. Back boob. Yeah, side boob. Back boob. Uh, there's a butt early. You see Nora's butt early, and there's <laughs> did, a little did we bit get that silhouette. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then yeah, the silhouette. Like there's a lot of it's tastefully done nudity <laughs> in this film, and I was not just like bam boob. But so Johnny goes to check on Sylvia after the day and see how things are going with her. And this scene's really weird. I couldn't understand. I'd see if you could make the heads and tails of this. So she walks in and he's bleeding. Yeah. And, well, and they're clearly like hitting on each other because she's like in a fucking just like a gown and she's like naked and like wet. And she's like, is this fine? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You look good. Uh, I was just taking a bath. So should I wait outside? Not if you don't mind how I'm dressed. But then he's bleeding, so she's like, take your shirt off. And he takes his shirt off, and he's laying on the couch, and she's, like, treating his back. And then she, like, leans to the side and falls headfirst into the table? What happened there? All right. I I could not figure out if she like just momentarily fainted and hit her head on the table. She like falls and hits the table, and then he like goes to catch her, and then they like just start making out, and then they they have sex. So then we cut back to, and this is amazing. We cut back to a Rainmaker's office, and he's telling people, "Oh boy, oh boy." Well, okay, I thought this was another setup into a flashback. Yeah. You thought it was going to be, Because yeah. the way he said, you're all probably wondering yeah. why I hate yeah. Peter whatever is last Peter, name. Peter, yeah. I know you wonder why I hate Goldson so much. Well, let me tell you, that hatred goes right to the bone. Gold something? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, let me... Goldson, sh- Goldson, yeah. Let me tell you why. And then he just takes a machine gun and starts blowing up a f- that same poster. See? Poster! From that dude's bedroom, of him oiled up in a mesh t-shirt with an Uzi, the bad guy has on the wall of his office, and he shoots it with a machine gun. It's fucking amazing. Like, where did he get that? Then that made me start thinking, like, maybe this guy was... Maybe one of his cover one time was to be a movie star or something. And so, like, this is a produced movie poster <laughs> that, they like, people have. I... Fucking super weird. Well, let me tell you. That hatred goes right to the bone. Give me the gun. So there are moments of very clearly like comedy, and because what they're going for was kind of like a an action comedy, you know, like where there's lots of funny moments. Like in the pool fight earlier, he like pulls a guy's wig off, and it's like, oh, you know, kind of like Jackie Chan kung fu style comedy, like yeah. hijinks. And there's the shot where um after the guy takes his shirt off and is getting treated, and it's a close up, and you think it's like, is that a butt or some? What is that? And then they pull back, and it's his arm, the crease of his arm, and they're like, "Hey, gotcha!" Like, gotcha. It's, there's like weird shit like that. So there's definitely comedic elements, but overall, this was going for like for... a serious action <laughs> drama with like some lighthearted comedic moments here and there. Except for the serious like drama and action scenes are fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the thing, is that all the serious stuff like the, is... The, the look on his, the look on the main dude's face when he's having a flashback, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and I love, so the next scene, they cut to him, this scene doesn't make any sense. They cut back to our guy, they're at the shooting range the next day, and they're like shooting, and then they're like... They, they talk about how they don't have anything going on that night, so they can, like, take the night off or whatever. What are you doing tonight? Sleeping. 
I haven't had a good night's sleep in weeks. So then, uh, and, and fucking Peter's outfit in this scene. He's wearing, like, cheetah pants and, like, a white v-neck that comes to here with, like, cut-off oh, sleeves. Oh, man, the 80s. And a white Ugh. triangle pocket. Like the, oh, oh, yes. God, it's a nightmare. Um, but he calls up Christina and is like, hey, I'm off tonight. Do you want to, like, hang out? And then as soon as he's on the phone, his Johnny comes back in and is like, never mind, we got something going on. Huh? Hmm. I psyched you out. I lied to you too. I was messing. I was. With me what the fuck? Dude? <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, you're a dick. Like, I was making okay, and then he's like, hangs up the phone. Like, he doesn't even. Ten o'clock, okay. Okay. <laughs> huh? Hmm. I psyched you out. I lied to you too. And then he like, starts laughing. He's like, ah, you got yeah. me. You got me. Fuck you. <laughs> Not a, that's not a funny joke. Like, ah, we got the night off. No, we don't. Fuck you. Like, it's like, what? Ah, I waited until you started making plans and then, <laughs> like, it's so stupid. Hmm. 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 They find the location of this warehouse and it's nighttime and they Probably sneak up on the somebody warehouse. else's wallet map. <laughs> location map that they have in their wallet. <sighs> so this scene has started with Peter driving a motorcycle through a through well, just the wall of a warehouse. Yes. Before, right before that, we cut where there's outside and we get the second lizard eating scene. Oh my god! Oh there's my god! There's a guard. There's just a guard. Oh. There's just a guard sitting there, and he catches a little lizard, and, and like looks at it forever. And then, then he like he like talks to it. And then he bites his head bites off. Bites its head off. So, yeah. I don't I don't know, man. I just it's what's in the movie. Well, I guess the weird thing isn't I mean, yeah, fucking you eat you eat food. If you want to catch a yeah. lizard, that's how you eat food, just but preferably I would want it I, I could eat lizard. I just want it cooked. Or or even if you if you're gonna do that, I would like cut its head off with a knife. And then maybe eat it and not bite its head Ugh. off. <laughs> it's very strange. We see we, this is where we're going to also introduce to Mr. T. Yes, Mr. T, which who gets oh boy. his introduction is an epic moment. So yeah, he drives the motorcycle through, and this big fight scene breaks out, like a ten-minute-long fight scene of all of them fighting everybody, and there's fucking crazy punching and flipping around, and and he's and at one point Peter's on the motorcycle and he's like driving it upstairs and hitting people with it and like. Just nonsense. At one point, he drives off the balcony and hits a dude in the face with a motorcycle tire. <laughs> and 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 they're they're not they don't want to kill anybody for some reason. They said that before they go in. They go, don't kill anybody if you can avoid it. So like, no guns. So they're not shooting anybody. There's a scene where Sylvia's doing these backflips and stuff. Oh to get God! Away from guy. Yes. And then she she steps in. I'm like, that's completely different location. Yes. yes. That was your stunt. Yes. Level. She flips. She does like a bunch of back handsprings out of the shot and go is going like this way, and then Sylvia comes in from this way. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I'm here. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, all right. Um. Uh, but there, yeah, and then where we meet Mr. T, who comes in by drop drop kicking somebody from a balcony in slow mo. <laughs> from the top rope, Mr. T comes in with a drop <laughs> kick. It's amazing. There's a moment where Peter. There's just so much hot nonsense going on here. There's a moment where Peter's on his motorcycle and he's up on that balcony place, and it, there's a guy across from him, and he's like. And drives at him, and the guy jumps off. Yeah, and then Peter just goes <laughs> into a wall. Drives into a wall. What? <laughs> I was like, what just happened? He just drives straight oh, into and a wall. I, I guess infrastructure is really shitty there because every time, every time they railings, run into, man, <laughs> railings break constantly. <laughs> The whole world in Indonesia must just be shitty rickety railings because that's all that happens in this movie is people crash through them like constantly. And there's like there's this is some of the stunts where we start to see where there's like one where uh 
uh, Peter, I think, or Johnny throws a guy through like a wood lattice and it looks incredibly painful. He throws him head first through this lattice and the guy like doesn't really make it through all the way. I'm like, Ugh. oh no, that looks bad. But okay, so like there's there's these barrels of fuel, I guess, or barrels of some sort of flammable liquid that are being broken everywhere. By the way, they also find the professor here. <laughs> oh yeah, well shit, because... Yeah, so first off, the professor's daughter, Christina, is dressed like a circus tent in the scene. Just to, <laughs> just to set that up. It's true. <laughs> like a fucking circus tent. <laughs> um, and then so at one point, they get into this room, and uh, Johnny's fighting somebody. He gets tackled through a window. Yeah. Fucking, there's so much shit breaks in this movie. It's amazing. Oh, and I gotta set this up, because there's so much... So much happens in this scene, I can't even... So at one point, some more backup comes in, and it's one guy... Like, most of them are dressed normal. One guy runs in, in like a full, like, big suit with gloves and yes. a machine gun. And I'm yes. like, what is he dressed what? like that? You'll, you'll see why he's dressed like that. So he gets tackled into, like, this office. Yeah. And he's gonna pick up this fan <laughs> to, to use as a weapon. And he picks up the fucking floor <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> which is great and then while and then he realizes oh there's a trap door here so he like opens it and he's like hey professor are you down there and he's like yeah i'm down here and while he's yelling down instead of just going down there for whatever reason the guy that he was fighting is pulling a weapon out of a closet next to him mm -hmm. and i looked at first it just kind of looks like a machine gun and i'm like oh shit john i was really upset johnny was gonna die right here not a machine gun it's a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Okay, so what's the best thing to do in a room that's full of fuel that's everywhere? Flames everywhere! <laughs> Shoot flames everywhere. But so somehow he shoots him at Johnny, but doesn't hit him. Johnny at the last second realizes, dodges, gets over there, and like knocks the guy out. And then is like, fucking flamethrower. Oh, yeah. Put that shit on and go to town. And this ain't no fucking blood predator or pass-through flamethrower. This, this thing is, is shooting flames. This thing is a real flamethrower <laughs> that is literally setting people on fire. It's incredible. And remember that guy I said earlier, like, why is that henchman dressed so weird? It's so he could get lit on fire. Because <laughs> that guy, yeah. and that's the thing where I was like, and then you see him and he's like, oh, he's like on fire. And I'm like, oh, they put him in the fire safety gear. And then so it didn't look weird. They just had him come in in that. So he was yeah. already wearing it. Like, the like scene. this is a, this is a long shot of somebody <laughs> literally being set ablaze. It's incredible. Sylvia, is the area clear? Okay. okay. So they have, they have a tearful reunion with the professor. And, yes. Uh, they get him out of there, and how quickly? Let me ask: How how long was that actor paid for? <laughs> Apparently, not very long, because <laughs> he gets killed off immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tina, look out! Dad, 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 dad. And then the glorious explosion. The warehouse goes up and yeah, up. just it's amazing. <laughs> So they go, oh, we cut to uh, the secret base where they drive like through over like a rock face that has doors on it that are super obvious. But I love they get there and it's like all the bad guys are grouping up. And uh, <laughs> uh, um, the, the van they drive has a Van Halen sticker on the back. Like they might be bad guys, but they got good taste in music. <laughs> uh, so at this point, also at one point, Victor, I don't remember, I think it's right around here. Victor decides to set up well, yeah, the the girlfriend because she, she like she's being like delegated to overlooking the warehouse, which gets blown up. Yeah, uh, and Victor's like, you know, she's getting too much in my way. We need to get rid of her. Hide this large transmitter. Yeah, somewhere in her room. You two hide the transmitter so that it looks like she's been using it secretly. Okay, fine. And then he tells uh, Rainmaker that she's, like, given tips to the police or whatever, and they go in and find it. Nora's responsible for all this chaos. And it's so weird, because he goes... <laughs> he says, like, after they find the radio, and he's like, you fucking bitch. He's like, if only you weren't so good in bed, I'd kill you right <laughs> I'd kill you right now. If only you weren't so good in bed, I'd kill you right now. 
And then his next line is, take her to the dungeons and kill her. I know very well that you hate this whore. Now she's all yours. You know better than I do what's suitable for her. Greg, it's slander. I swear. Kill her slowly. And I'm like, what was the point of that last line? You were just like, man, it's a good thing you're good and better. I'd kill you. Kill her. It's like, wait, okay, well, never mind. So then there's a funeral, but we don't see it. They come out of the church post-funeral uh, for the professor. And what's her name? Christina. Or, yeah. Christina decides to drive separately home and gets kidnapped. In the most amazing yes. way possible. Yes. <laughs> she gets like boxed in with these Four trucks. trucks. And then, uh, then I guess I have a remote ramp yeah the ramp opens up down, on one. and then another vehicle comes up behind her pushes, and pushes her, her in. it's amazing but i'm like she's not freaking the fuck out like I, maybe it's just me but if i'm driving down the road and all of a sudden on all four sides i am pinned in by like 10 feet by giant trucks i'm losing my mind i'm like what the fuck is happening right now much better than before they take well. They go to Victor and and uh, and Victor and and they're doing drug stuff. And I love this. <laughs> they're doing drug stuff. And and Rainmaker's like, "Hey, Victor, what's our drug selling strategy?" Victor, do you uh, still remember the method we have of dealing? Of course I do. And Victor's <laughs> like, "You give them first, the, yeah. First, you give it to them free, yeah. So they get addicted, yeah. Then." You tell them to sell their their wife, wife, their daughter, their whatever. Whatever it takes to get their high. First, give them the dope free. And when they become addicts, tell them to sell their wives, daughters, whatever they got. Victor, you talented bastard. Victor, you talented bastard. <laughs> it's like your, your brilliant strategy is like every drug dealer strategy in the history of time. Exactly. Like... Get them addicted and then make them pay a lot for it. Brilliant. There, there's a scene where Victor's like dressing down the lower henchman. Yeah. And then he just goes like, I won't tolerate any like insubordinate. And he just starts smacking people. It's the way he delivers those yeah. lines. I don't accept any excuses. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, and in that one scene, and I don't, or it's later, but he says, uh, He's where he's dressing those dudes down, and he goes, he goes, I don't accept any excuses. And the one guy goes, but I, and he shoots him in the head. But I, uh... <laughs> just shoots him in the head. Oh, and Victor's man. tie during all of this is way too short. His tie comes down to like here. <laughs> it drove me insane. His tie comes down to like. Six inches above his belt. It's supposed to go to your belt, Victor. Get your shit together. To Benny, oh, the right. random guy. <laughs> Benny gets shit on because he fucked up. And then so all of a sudden no. he turns up. Yeah, no, he, well, he did this oh, one thing successful. He kidnapped, yeah, well, he like, kidnapped Christina. And then he, so for messing up so much, he gets drug off to presumably get his ass kicked. Yeah. It's only a very small success among your hundreds of failures. So then he, we cut to our good guys, and Benny shows up, <laughs> like all beat up. Yeah, and he's like, uh, "Hey, I, I, I don't, want, I don't like this guy. I want to help you catch him. Here's what you need to do." And the brilliant plan that that they needed his help for is in the middle of broad daylight to drive a boat up to the island. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. <laughs> They drive up, and this scene, so this is the boat attack scene. They drive up on a boat. It's Johnny, Sylvia, and uh, Peter. Well, and then B Biddy also says, don't do it. Yeah. But you're making a big mistake going there. They want you to come, and you're going to do exactly what they want. That's our problem. As you wish. You can die, too, for all I care. Oh. As you wish. Oh, my sweet Wesley. He's like, but don't do it. I don't even know. It's so weird. But so they just drive their fucking boat in the middle of the day, and there's like dozens of people on the island, all with guns pointed at them. Uh, what's his name's in another boat? Rainmaker's in another yeah, boat, like launching torpedoes with torpedoes. And they're just like I said, it's the middle of the day, and they just drive right up to the island, and it's so stupid because they don't, they would be dead. Like there's so many people shooting at them, and none of them hit them. And so after they drive around for a few minutes. Well, Johnny starts throwing smoke smoke, uh, smoke grenades in yeah. the water, and I'm like, "That's okay. It's way too windy for those to, right yeah. now because those aren't covering no. anything." So he drops these orange smoke grenades, and then they all put on scuba gear, 
and dive in. You could have just scuba in. Why did you drive around getting shot at for ten minutes? Did then, you, did you see the, uh, the, the, the there's like the, ed, the the right edge of the frame when they're like scuba diving? You can see the edge the, where the seal of the aquarium is that they're in. No, yes. really? Yeah, that's amazing. I did not see that. That's incredible. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Good. It's a great movie. Yeah, it is. Damn those lucky bastards. Finish them off. Attack. So then they find Nora, uh, the bad guy's girlfriend, who has been... <laughs> she has like a bomb a strapped bomb to her neck. A bomb strapped to her chest. And they pull it off and throw it and it explodes. Um, and then Sylvia stays with her, I think. So we come back to Victor, dressing down the guys. That's when he shoots the dude in the head. Uh, but then they bring out Christina. And... Uh, and like I said earlier, he's into her. And so, but like he's holding, the, some, the one of his henchmen's holding her next to him and she spits on his face. But she spits the most insane amount of saliva. Yes. It's just like, Holy all, and I'm like, oh my God, she was and really Victor, storing up for Victor that one. Victor being a creep is like, yeah, I like that. So then, Peter drives through the wall. It's a common theme in this yes, film. Yes, that's right. He drives it's... through the wall. With a truck. Ugh. In a truck. And uh, Johnny jumps down from the ceiling. He crawled through a hole or something. And uh, and so the three of them are there. And they, yeah, it's another big fight scene breaks out. And Johnny's like driving a truck through walls and hitting people. And it's just nonsense. And everybody's kicking everybody's ass. And it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Turns out Benny was a shithead and and stood him up the whole time and which is like he told them not like everything about this it's is so confusing. weird yeah and it's they would have done it the same way anyways yeah to i don't know what he did that gave them like what did yeah what did he offer them that made them think yeah here here's our trap with you getting the jump on us yeah i don't know um so they get they they're bound to this they get captured main support to this yeah. factory they're in and then people start placing cardboard boxes down all yeah. over the place yeah and fuel yeah and i love too so this is a big moment where rainmakers got him right mm -hmm. and he just something like t tell them at some, some point he says you'll soon meet god tell him i'm doing fine here i love that line yeah it's a good line so he's like got him in this warehouse and this is the mo this is the guy who's been set on killing this whole time and of course he pulls the classic james bond villain moment of I'm gonna tie. We're gonna tie into this post. We're gonna light this building on fire, and then I'm gonna leave before they die. <laughs> so I don't know for sure that you know he, the guy he's been tracking down and wanted to kill his whole for like for years. He doesn't actually care to watch him die. He just assumes no, you know. No. So the the building's on fire and they're stuck to this thing. And then after they all leave, um. Would pull a knife out of their boots yeah, and start yeah, cutting they, themselves they get, free. And they're, they're, I love how they get through the flames. Amazing! It's actually kind of cool. Like, it's kind of, I, they I don't get, know. They get, in the, they get inside these barrels and yeah. just roll through it. And then when I saw Johnny at the end, like, roll himself through, yeah. like, you better hope you got enough momentum. <laughs> yeah, you don't stall out in the middle of the fire. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. Yeah, like, climb into big metal barrels and roll through the fire. Um, but they're, they're at the door trying to open the door, and they're like, oh, no, we can't get out. You put a giant <laughs> hole in the wall over there. Yeah. He drove a truck through it. <laughs> Great. But, and at this moment, too, I was like, oh, wait, what happened to Sylvia? Bum, bum, bum. Sylvia drives a just a giant, in, what, what kind of industrial vehicle is that? It's a forklift, it's I a forklift? think. It looks like it, yeah. 
through the wall and it's so great because it's like you know they'd already driven a giant hole through the wall but they needed to do it again just because they love it well, so okay. much <laughs> it wasn't just that they drove it through the wall to get out of the building they drive it through another wall <laughs> There's now three holes in this <laughs> new factory. Driving through. They just love driving things through walls. It's their favorite thing. Oh, yeah? Hey, Kool-Aid! Oh, yeah. Here comes Kool-Aid. Here comes Kool-Aid. So they get outside, and it's like the big final fight. They drive, Nora runs off. Oh, God, they have to bring in, like, the slowest fucking vehicle, too. So they get in a firefight, and uh, Nora, the bad guy's <laughs> wife, Runs up, grabs a machine gun, and, and runs off and starts murdering everybody. It's amazing. <laughs> kind of great. And then she squares off with Victor. Victor! You bastard! And Victor's like, uh, you're fucking, you're gonna die. By the way, what a pose of Victor <laughs> up on the rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then as he's about to, he shoots Nora and kills her. But right as he shoots her, uh, Christina shoots him and he dies. So they're, those two people wrapped up those storylines. Victor, stop it! Victor, stop it. By, by the way, the stunt doubles, whose job it was <laughs> to roll down. down those hills. Oh boy. Yeah, it's like this really interesting location that they used where it's like these big rock cliff hilly thing. It's very I'm not sure what it is, like build big formations of like rock. It's kinda cool looking. But um yeah, <laughs> fucking stunt doubles rolling down those. It's like, oh boy, that nope. did not look fun. So then there's another great moment, and it's incredible, where somebody starts driving a car at Johnny, and Johnny oh. jumps in slow motion, drop kicks through the windshield. Drop kicks through the windshield of this car into the dude's face. And then we cut to Peter, who's out there with a rope, just clotheslining the shit out of motorcycle guys that are driving by. And I love it. He clotheslined a bunch of them, beats the shit out of them, and then he drags them all behind a rock and hides them and clotheslines more motorcycles that start driving by. <laughs> like, I'm just like, and then there's a shot where they show him after he does it. There's like dozen, a dozen bikes laying around him and he's standing in the middle of the wreckage of all these bikes. He's fucked up. They basically tie him up with a rope and then drag him around. Drag him around, yeah. Start dragging him. And then he gets free um, and gets a motorcycle. And I don't remember exactly how it happens, but... Uh, then they do the same thing to Rainmaker. Yeah, they grab Rainmaker. Rainmaker runs <laughs> off, and they grab him, wrap him up, and, and drag as, him. As they have him pinned down, Peter puts on his... Puts on his shoes. And stomps him in his, le his other not... His other good leg. Yeah. Hmm. This is for my woman. <laughs> this one is for the professor. <laughs> And this one will be from yeah. Mr. T comes in and saves yeah. the day for saves Rainmaker. The day. Yeah. Uh, and then the helicopter flies in. They get Rainmaker. They get him on the helicopter. There's a scene where when they get Rainmaker on the helicopter, the camera like shakily <laughs> zooms into the rotors. It's fucking weird. Oh, and then well, they get Mr. T and Rainmaker go into the, the helicopter, and the other dude's like, all right, I'll just shut the door and, yeah. and die now. And die down here. And then as he's taking off, uh, Peter runs up and <laughs> grabs on to the, the, the bottom of the helicopter. And it looks like in that shot that that's just a dude hanging on the bottom of that helicopter. I mean, they probably hit a safety cable, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually just some dude holding on to the helicopter. The last moment is great. So Peter's hanging there. He the like guy... climbs up just enough to open the door. Yeah. And then Rainmaker's, like, trying to kick him down. Yeah. He grabs the machine gun that they have. Fucking die, you bastard. And as he's, kicked, as he's kicked off, he fires up at it, and it just blows up. He's falling. There's a great shot of him falling, shooting up with the <laughs> machine gun and the helicopter. He hits it, like, twice. Up in flames. Completely explodes. Rainmaker's dead. Stabilized. John, or Peter falls into the ocean and swims to shore so he can rip that shirt off oh, and show us that yeah. glorious physique. 
and then all of, and then he throws a fist up in the air like uh, yeah 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 and yeah. then it uh all of our friends that show up the breakfast it's the breakfast club yep. of, of uh dea agents yeah sincerely yours the breakfast club don't don't But yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and then the music is really good that oh, kicks in over the credits. The, yeah, the themes, all the theme music in this. Yeah, story. it's really good. <sighs> it's a great movie, man. Holy shit. I love this movie. It's, it's great. It's, it's good great. Bad. It's good bad. It's I awesome. fucking love this movie. It is so it's, much fun. It is crazy. It's, it's crazy. Just... It's fucking crazy. And I like, can't express enough the amount of nonsense stunts and people flying through walls and through railings and off balconies. Getting and, set on fire. Getting set on fire and explosions and just... It's... It's amazing and the hair and the clothes and like everybody's dressed like insane people <laughs> and it's completely viewable on youtube on youtube like, just trauma yeah, they, yeah and it's their official it's not like anything it's a trauma's official youtube page or and you can go watch it and it's oh my goodness it's glorious so just make a night of it yeah and then watch this you'll thing. you'll enjoy it <laughs> Just want to remind you all that if you want to, you can support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash GB or BB. Support us for two bucks a month. You get access to our podcast, the backlog of Kyle Hates Everything, which is the show that spawned this sh very show you're watching now, where it's a podcast only where we made fun of Transformers and fucking 10,000 BC and 2012 and all kinds of stuff. Check that out. Uh, we also do a current podcast where we talk about movies, video games, other kind of stuff like that. And then at the five dollar level, you get access to GB or BB Broken Dreams, where we review and talk about our own failed projects. You can watch the light in my eyes die and watch me laugh as it happens. <laughs> so <laughs> that's again, that's GB or BB or Patreon.com slash GB or BB. If you don't do that, that's fine. We still love you. We still like you. We're still gonna keep making this show for free because we love doing it. It's a lot of fun. And it's been a wild ride. Thank you, guys. It fills so many holes left by my childhood. <laughs> Wait a second. There's so many ways I can be taken. I was about to say, I fill so many holes for me in different ways, <laughs> let me tell you. That's what your Patreon dollars are going for, folks. <laughs> oh, my butt. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I get all I get all the Patreon payments and it's rolls of quarters. <laughs> Brian has for a very specific reason. <laughs> Brian has difficulty getting through airport security. <laughs> it's TSA. Yeah, uh, you can check me out and uh, but if you could do me a favor, I need that for my taxi fare. So. Please don't confiscate it. Um, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Keep watching the movies. Thank you, guys. We love you. You're the best. I, this is way off the rails. I'm just drooling. <laughs> Bye, guys. I don't, know. I don't know what that was. <laughs> George Washington enema. worst presidents you could have up your ass. <laughs>